before we talk about anything regarding NXT today here on the channel, I just want to get something off my chest real quick. Very good friend of mine in the wrestling community. He's been here on the channel before. He was actually on the channel last month. His name's Gamers Goon, uh, aka Austin. And he is on his way to college. He's probably at college right now. He left today. And I wish him nothing but the best on his adventure in college. But last night, he sent out a tweet saying that his father had tested positive for COVID-19. And I want everybody who is listening to this review right now, before we, before I talk about anything NXT, I want all of you who are listening to this review right now to send your thoughts and prayers to Gamers Goon, his father, and his entire family going through this difficult time. I, I guarantee you, brother, um, your dad is going to defeat COVID-19. He's going to get through this and everything is going to be so much better. Uh, so before we start talking about NXT, thoughts and prayers go out to Gamers Goon and his entire family over this situation. But NXT, NXT was a solid show last night. It was a solid show. Wrestling was good. There was some good wrestling last night. That opening match between Io Shirai and Shotzi Blackheart, that was really good. That NXT tag team title match, it was excellent. That was an excellent tag team title match. But I really don't know how to feel because we got NXT TakeOver announced for October 4th. No title, just, just NXT TakeOver. A lot of people were pitching for NXT TakeOver Halloween Havoc, but I don't think that's going to happen. It's just probably going to be NXT TakeOver. So, I mean, it's whatever. But we got that announced for Sunday, October 4th. And there are a huge, huge problems with this. Number one, this is a three-week build. We're getting a three-week build before NXT TakeOver. I might as well talk about this to start off the review today, but um, this is not how NXT operates. This is not how the old NXT operates. The old NXT would be building to the next TakeOver for about eight, nine, or 10 weeks, a couple of months. They'd be long build, long storytelling, forget to one takeover to the next takeover and they would not rush with it they wouldn't rush to get to the next storyline but this is I, this feels like the main roster man this feels like Raw and Smackdown sooner rather than later NXT is just going to be known as a third brand who is exactly like Raw and Smackdown and NXT is not going to be that cool kid anymore in the WWE. It's just going to be in the same place as Raw and SmackDown. And I mean, you could tell, man. You could tell that the influences each and every week are coming in from Raw and SmackDown. While it should be the old NXT should be like Raw and SmackDown. Uh, the old NXT, uh, let me rephrase that. Raw and SmackDown should be like the old NXT from 2020. Uh, 2018, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But it's NXT that is doing stuff that Raw and SmackDown would do. Like, they're usually the ones who have three-week builds to a pay-per-view. And it doesn't mean anything. It really doesn't mean anything. And then people will go ahead and say, Oh, why aren't you complaining that AEW Double and Nothing had a three-week build, but this TakeOver has a three-week build? Huge difference. AEW was shut down for a month for COVID-19, and they were stuck in the Nightmare Family, in the, in the Nightmare Factory 
and they had to tape five episodes of Dynamite and Dark in one day. This is an entire situation. You could have announced this the night NXT TakeOver 30 happened and nobody would have a problem with it. But the fact that you announced it yesterday and it's almost three weeks away, that's a big, that's a red flag. That's a red flag. And you could tell when I said earlier that they're rushing with the storylines and they're not like taking their time. You can tell because they are literally um, doing next week's NXT. They're having a battle royal to determine the number one contender. And they're having a gauntlet to determine the number one contender. And it's just going to be filled with challengers. Because why? Because they don't have enough time to build, to make a proper story out of uh, a big match. They don't have time. And you know what? Shame on them. Shame on them. Or at least push it back a few weeks. And then you build proper stories and all that. But we're getting it on October 4th. And it just doesn't feel right. It just doesn't feel right to me whatsoever. But we'll get to it. We'll get to it when the match announcements. I just want to get that off my chest real quick. But let's start the review. Let's start off with. Excuse me. Io Shirai, the NXT Women's Champion, versus Shotzi Blackheart in a non title match. This match was 13 minutes. This match was very good. Uh, very good stuff from Io, as always. Shotzi Blackheart, she is coming into her zone. She will definitely be NXT Women's Champion in 2021. I think that. Um, I think we all know who's going to take the title off of Io. It's going to be Candice LeRae. And then I think after Candice defeats Io, whether it's uh, this takeover, which I don't think it's going to be, but there's rumored to be a takeover in December. That's when I think it's going to happen. I think uh, Candice LeRae will be the NXT Women's Champion by the time 2020 comes to a close. And in 2021, possibly WrestleMania weekend, uh, I could see Shotzi Blackheart defeating Candice LeRae and becoming the new NXT Women's Champion. I can absolutely see that happening. But Io Shirai won this match in 13 minutes. Very good. Um, she hit her moonsault on top and her knees hit the stomach of Shotzi Blackheart. And when I tell you, man, that looked painful. That looked painful. Shotzi Blackheart, I know she was hurting in that sequence, man. She was hurting. That looked horrible. And even Io was holding her knee after the match. So I'm happy that both of them are okay after that spot because that looked brutal. But besides that, this match was very good to start off the show. And NXT, uh, Io, Shirai, Io Shirai defeated Shotzi Blackheart. We had Tommaso Ciampa versus some jobber. I, could not get, I don't remember his name. I, my apologies if you guys know his name. Leave it in the comments below. But Dip Champa won this match in two minutes with a widow's belt. And then Jake Atlas came out. The dude that Champa decimated two weeks ago. And, Ch and, Ch and Atlas was like, the first time I had an opportunity against you, I was excited and humble and honored to be in the ring with you. And then after what you did to me, now I'm out for revenge. And I want to hurt you. And then they announced uh, Jake Atlas versus Tommaso Ciampa next week for NXT. Uh, Atlas is not going to win. Ciampa will get another win after him uh, against him. And then Ciampa attacked him in the parking lot. And confronting him comes Kyle O'Reilly from the Undisputed Era. So, I mean, we could be seeing Tommaso Ciampa... Versus Kyle O'Reilly at NXT TakeOver. And you know what, man? If that happens, sign me up. That's That could be a very good match. Kyle O'Reilly versus Tommaso Ciampa. Yes, please. Sign me up for that match. We had Kushida versus Austin Theory. Kushida won this match in about 8 minutes. Uh, solid stuff. So nothing 
that special. The only thing that we got out of this is Kushida is more aggressive now than ever after the Velveteen Dream attacked him after a match a couple we uh, like a month ago. And he put in the hoverboard lock on Austin Theory. Theory tapped out. Kushida would not let go of the hoverboard lock. He would not let go. So we could be seeing Kushida versus the Velveteen Dream down the line, whether it's on NXT or NXT TakeOver. I'm not sure. I would put it on NXT, to be honest. I mean, why not? No one wants to see the Velveteen Dream get a spot on TakeOver. So, um, and with the five matches, I would probably put that on the NXT. You could put that on the NXT Go Home Edition before TakeOver. And you could get people to watch that way, I guess. But um, that's that. Then we got the NXT Tag Team title match. And I actually wish I took notes for this match. Because um, there was a lot of stuff that happened in this match. And this match was freaking excellent. This was a great NXT Tag Team Championship match. And I think it was... I, I would prefer the second match they had over the third but this one was very close. I actually haven't taken a handwritten notes on a match in a while. Because I'm going to get a little off track here. Because, I mean, I got a lot of time. So, um, I haven't taken notes in a while. One, because it's just way too... Uh, it's hard to, like, jot down notes that's happening during the match. And it's like, when you're jotting down notes, it's like you're missing the match, you know? It's like... Okay, I can't do this and watch the match at the same time. I'm just going to try my best to keep it in my head and see what I remember. And then another reason is I feel like I'm boring you guys when I'm just sitting here go talking about a match and I'm sitting here saying, Oh, um, Johnny Gargano hit a head scissors on uh, Finn Balor. And, and, and I feel like you guys are like, uh, uh, we, come on, man. Just get to the point. Just get to the end of the match and talk about how you feel about the match. So that's why I kind of start talk, stopped talking about the notes during this match. But this was very good. Very good match. Great match. Uh, I used a lot of words from this match. But Breezango won. Breezango won, which was expected. I expected Breezango to win. And, um... You, uh, Imperium, they were going for their European bomb. Bomb, Fandango drop kicked Eichner with Breeze on his shoulders. Eichner fell back to the corner. Breeze punched down Bartel. Breeze rolled up Eichner and retained the tag team titles. Now, what do I expect next for Breezango? I expect them. To continue their feud with Legato Del Fantasma, with Raul Mendoza, and Joaquin Wilde. And I expect them to be the next NXT Tag Team Champions. Whether it's that on October 4th or NXT, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But Imperium, more than likely, they will be going back to NXT UK with Walter. Which is actually starting back up today. 3 p.m. Eastern Time on the WWE Network. And if anyone's going to ask, am I going to do NXT UK reviews? Nah, I'm not. I'm not going to review NXT UK. I just don't have the time for it, unfortunately, with school, uh, family, football practice. The season starts uh, next week. I have a scrimmage next Thursday. So actually, uh, speaking of that, I might not do NXT next week because I do have a football scrimmage on Thursday night. So I'll keep you guys updated with that. I'll keep you guys on what's going to be happening next week. Probably at the week and during the weekend, I'll be updating you because next week it's going to be a crazy schedule, man. So uh, stay tuned for that. We got Casey Catanzaro and Caden Carter versus Exile Lee and Jesse Kamea. I could not give a shit about this match. I literally fast forwarded it and I saw that Caden Carter and Casey Catanzaro won this match. Um, we had Undisputed Era, Bobby Fish, 
and Roderick Strong versus Drake Maverick and what was supposed to be uh, Killian Dane. But Dane would not show up during the match. And he was just sitting backstage and watching the match backstage. And then William Regal was like, You're not gonna you're not gonna help your partner out. And then Dane was like, he can do it on his own. And he walked away from William Regal. I absolutely hate this storyline. Okay? I don't care about it. I don't care where it goes. Undisputed error, they deserve so much better. Then this crap storyline between Killian Dane and Drake Maverick. Dane is going nowhere in NXT. Drake Maverick is going nowhere in NXT. The best he is going is the Cruiserweight title. That was probably uh, his ceiling, the Cruiserweight title. And, you know, I just don't, I just don't take him that serious, unfortunately. But, um... Uh, I believe Strong hit a chair on uh, Drake Maverick after the match, and it caused a DQ, and Dane ran them off. Uh, Dane attacked the Undisputed Era and chased off the Undisputed Era. Then Dr and Drake Maverick was getting all hyped up. He's like, we're a tag team, me and you, we're a tag team. He pushed Killian Dane lightly, and then Dane dropped him. With a right hand. So like I said. I, I cannot stand this storyline. It's not good. It's it's terrible. And um, I do not care. About neither Drake Maverick. Or Killian Dane. Because they're going nowhere. So that's that. And then like I said. Earlier. We got a couple of match announcements for next week. Tommaso Ciampa. Versus Jake Atlas. We got a women's battle royal to determine the number one contender for the NXT Women's Championship. I can't stand battle royals. You guys know. If you guys watch my videos and you know what I like and dislike, I cannot stand battle royals. They're just so lazy, they are so boring. And I do not really care about them until it gets down to, like, the final five. So, and then you got women in there like Casey Catanzaro, Caden Carter, Jesse Kamea, Zia Lee, Aaliyah, Raquel Gonzalez, Dakota Kai, Shati Blackheart, Tegan Knox. Um, Candice LeRae, and Rhea Ripley. So, that's that. No Mercedes Martinez. And no Mia Yim in the Battle Royal. So are they both? Are they in retribution? Are they in retribution? They could be. Mia Yim is definitely in retribution. I know that for a fact. Mercedes Martinez, she's possibly in retribution. So we'll see. Who do I think is going to win this Battle Royal? Uh, I don't care. I, I just don't care, man. Uh, Tegan and Candice are probably gonna take each other out, so they can have a match at Takeover. I'm prob I'm gonna I'm probably gonna go with Rhea. Do the safe bet. I'm gonna go with Rhea to win the battle royal. And then we got the gauntlet match. Five men. They did not announce who the five men were gonna be, so I can't really predict. It, it, it's just so lazy, man. It's so lazy. This feels like main roster garbage. And there's going to be a winner. And there's going to be no story behind the match. So, I don't know. I don't know. I could just tell already. Uh, this is going to be a throwaway takeover. And it's not going to be a really a takeover that a lot of people are talking about. So, that's that. Uh, main event really quick. Timothy Thatcher versus Damian Priest for the NXT North American Championship. Talk about TakeOver. Why was this match not saved for TakeOver? If you knew already before uh, this episode of NXT that you were going to have NXT TakeOver on October 4th, then why would you put this match here and not on TakeOver? You're going to need a North American Championship match at TakeOver 
And I think Timothy Thatcher would have been the perfect guy for that match at TakeOver. Now, Priest beat Timothy Thatcher. Match was decent. I had a hard time paying attention to it, actually. I was not that invested in this match. I don't know what it was, but something was not clicking for me. And um, uh, I don't know why this match was unsafe for TakeOver. Damien Priest won with the final reckoning. The match was decent. But who who are they going to have for Damien Priest? They got, they got two weeks to tell a story off of who's going to challenge Damien Priest for the North American Championship. Like, this is why I'm not a fan of these short three-week builds. I'm not. The fact that they did not save this match for TakeOver is dumb. It's so dumb. And, you know... They're gonna they're gonna have to dig themselves out of out of a bad situation. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with the rest of the build of takeover, so that's it. I'm gonna wrap up the NXT review here on the channel. I wanna thank you guys for watching this video. If you have not already, subscribe to the channel. We got a loaded a loaded week next week. Next week, we got Clash of Champions. Uh, like I said on the... Um, did I say it yet? I don't think I did. But I will be having a guest on the Clash of Champions review. Huge Finn Balor fan. His name is Cassius Cam. He will be on the uh, Clash of Champions preview and predictions next week with me. I'll keep you guys updated on that. Um, comment down below what you thought of this week's episode of NXT. Like this video if you like what I had to say about this episode of NXT. Follow me on Twitter at Connor underscore Joseph. Leave your questions down below for the 200 subscriber Q&A video next Tuesday here on the channel. I gotta get out of here. Got some schoolwork to do. Got a long football practice again. If I don't have any schoolwork tonight... I will be live tweeting during. Excuse me. Uh, I'll be live tweeting during Thursday Night Football. Have a good one, guys.